Whoa. Wow. Hi guys, welcome to Beards Eye View, and this is going to be my spoiler free review of Joker. Before we begin, don't forget to like and comment down below, subscribe and ring the bell to be notified of when I do videos. I do them every single Wednesday, so keep a look out for those. Also, look to the end of this video so you can find out you can save 15% on some awesome clothing. I will be doing a spoiler filled review, uh, but it's coming maybe a day or two after this one, so make sure you keep a look out for it, because it is coming, but this one is spoiler free, so you don't have to worry if you haven't seen the movie yet. Joker. Uh, Joaquin Phoenix taking on the role of Joker, uh, loosely based off a character from the DC Universe, based kind of sort of in the DC Universe, but it's also kind of just out on its own tangent, doing its own standalone piece. Um, I can't remember who directed it. Was it Todd Phillips? Could be Todd Phillips. I, I can't remember, sorry. But this film, going in, I was really worried. I was so worried that it was just going to ruin the character of the Joker or tell me an origin story that was going to wreck something of this character or take something away from it. But the fact that it kind of had its own piece, it did its own thing, and it was just all kinds of... Of incredible. Let's just get it straight into the Joaquin Phoenix. His performance is Oscar worthy and it better be getting an Oscar nomination because good lord it was incredible. Just everything he committed to this performance, even the weight loss that he did, his movements, every little moment that he did, his characteristics, it, he drove this performance to absolute perfection of this desperate, out of look, hopeless character that's being kicked and knocked down every day of his life by so many people having shit and shit and shit just constantly f thrown on top of him until he finally snaps and he just the whole thing is just he, he nails his performance so perfectly and it is also a hat to the the way the film is built they, it's layered upon layered upon layered of stuff where you think things are happening and then suddenly it takes that turn and you go oh my god this happened instead and it's just it's showing the inner workings of this guy's mind and they just are oh, it's just so encapsulated to watch you just you can't take your eyes off the screen you really can't cinematography uh, I'm really impressed, like seriously impressed. Just the way that they did things, just from the angles, from the low angles, and everything, the way that they did, shot things, and just the intimacy of the of this cinematography, the way they just did everything was just really, really well done. It kept you hooked in, and yeah, I, I really can't complain at that side of things. The filmmaking side of it was incredible. As far as story and pacing are concerned, spoiler free, of course. It, it was flawless, like the pacing was done so well where it was just built and built and built, it never lagged, it never got boring, it kept you hooked in with things that are building up and then they take twists and turns and yeah, twists and turns galore, like you think things are happening, you think things are going down this route at least two or three times in the film and then suddenly it takes that turn or it reveals something of the character or of something in that scene that makes you go, holy shit, what is going on here and just... That shows how well a film can be built, where it leads you down one path and it completely veers you off into another. And it, it was incredible. I mean, a lot of it is down to Joaquin's uh, performance, but you can't deny the way it was filmed and the way it was paced. Brilliant. It's weird how many emotions you go through with this character, Arthur Fleck, becoming Joker and being this character. Because at the start, you feel so sorry for him. You really do. You just you look at it and you think, for anybody that's been kicked down and beaten up and bullied and made to feel crap in their life and just isn't given a break and they're at that brink of depression and anxiety and everything, they force that into this character so you feel something. You feel terrible for the guy. All the stuff that he's going through, trying to keep down a job, trying to you know, spend time with his mum, trying to have fun and trying to just enjoy life but then everything just keeps kicking him down this whole thing building up to these to, to, to his moments that when he snaps and it's just it's so well done and it just it, oh god it made me feel so bad for the guy and then when things take their twists and turns you just kind of like oh god it's getting it's getting dark because it, it, it is a dark film i'm not going to deny that it is really dark as as it should be really the dark twists and turns the character takes you go oh it's too far it's too it's going too far with certain things but you'd like at the same time, it's like that, that moment you could think, I kind of make sense of why he, that would happen to him and why this would happen. It's, 
giving you the understanding of a deeply disturbed character inside their brain and why they do what they do. And again, it's showing how well this film is made when you understand his side of the story. Negatives. Um, I am struggling. I really am struggling. I can't think of anything that sticks out to me in my mind that I looked at it and I didn't like. I, I generally can't. It was paced brilliantly, the acting was incredible, the cin cinematography was brilliant, the, the length of the film wasn't too long, it wasn't too short, characterization was brilliant, um, little nods to the expanded kind of DC universe of, you know, it sits in this world to a point, certain things that happen, the twists and turns, beginning, middle, end, I, I can't see anything that makes me go, I didn't like that bit. Everything was just done great. There's a lot of controversy going around with this film at the minute of how dark it is and how violent it is and that it's promoting violence, which it's not because there's so many other films out there that do the exact same thing if that's the case. They're just looking for a reason to hate on it because it's the Joker and he's a disturbed character. So they want to find a reason for it to boycott it and have it not happen. And Again, it's whenever people say video games cause violence. No, they don't because if that's the case, we're all murderers because we do it all the time. No, rubbish. It's the same thing here. It's just that controversy of trying to make it seem like, oh, it's dark dark and disturbing, therefore you shouldn't be watching it because it, it's going to make you a dark and disturbed person. No, it won't. It's either there or it isn't in your brain. And th this is an incredible film, and yes, it is dark. Yes, it is very violent in certain points, but it never sat there going, oh, it's just violent for violence's sake. It's, no it's not there just killing people randomly, like GTA or something like that, where it's just random and doesn't make sense. It's earned. Every moment that there's a violent moment or a disturbing moment or a dark moment, it Every moment is earned for the story, the pacing, the way he built this character of Arthur Fleck and his struggle that he goes through. So when he snaps and he does the things he does, you go, it's earned. I understand what, it's terrible, it's awful, and things like that shouldn't be happening, but you get why he's doing it. And like I said, it feels earned. So these people that are going around saying that this film is too dark and disturbing and violent and it's going to promote things, rubbish. Absolute rubbish. It's just people just trying to cause a problem for problems sake. I did quite like uh, Robert De Niro's performance as well uh, of this uh, talk show host. As you see it in the trailers, it's a talk show host. And I could see from the start when the seeds are being, uh, beginning to be sown and as they develop that character along with um, Arthur, that... I could see where the end game of that character was going to end up. Obviously I'm not spoiling it here, I'll talk about it in my spoiler review, but as it was building in those last kind of moments, I was like, yeah, I can see what's going to happen here, and it's, it's going to be awesome, and it really was incredible. The final kind of closing act, as you will, the final piece leading to the end, the whole that whole thing, it's just that moment where it's just it's built and built and built to the point where he finally full on snaps and it's just he's getting all his frustration his pent up frustration of the city the people and everything around him everything going to shit and everybody being horrible and him just piling that all into this final performance this final piece and again it feels earned you sit there going I understand why he feels this way it's awful and it just again another incredible moment from Joaquin Phoenix incredible performance epic if you think about an end credit scene there isn't one, um, so don't worry about that. There is no end credit scene, uh, which is good. I, I actually quite like that there isn't because, as I've said, it, this film kind of feels like its own thing. It's its own standalone piece based loosely on a character that we know. It may not be the Joker we know and love. It may just be this other Joker, a, a, a precursor Joker, if you will, that kind of a thing. I feel like maybe it's its own piece, its own kind of character. So it stands alone. Yes, it has these kind of tidbits and everything, again, I'll get into a spoiler review, of the wider universe of the DCU. You can't not, really, when he's sitting in Gotham and everything. So there are bits that link it, but it's so loose that you can interpret it any way that you want to interpret it. You can connect it in any way that you want to connect it. So the way they do it is, is flawless for me. I think the way they put it together is brilliant because it, it leads it to make your mind up yourself, and that is... 
it's great when you walk away from a film thinking of what you would want that to be or what you think that is, how that speaks to you. Guys, overall, Joker was an absolutely flawless, incredible piece of cinema. Joaquin Phoenix is absolutely incredible in this character. He nails every performance, every moment on screen. He commands your presence. You're interested, you're invested in the character. They built the character correctly. The film was paced incredibly. The cinematography is awesome. Actors all did their jobs absolutely incredible to feed off this character that is the Joker. Everything was done right. It was beginning, middle, and end, all paced brilliantly. The finale was incredible. The, the loose links that we've got to the wider universe, everything they've done in this film was incredible. Even the dark and violent stuff, again, it's earned, so it makes sense, and it, it makes sense for the character because of how much of a dark and disturbed character he is. Everything that was encompassing this entire film was incredible. I cannot fault it. I really can't. I'm so buzzing about how great this film is that I implore you to go out and see it. Even if you're not a comic book fan, really, or you're not a DC fan, just go and watch it for its own standalone piece and just enjoy it for what it is because, God damn, is it a hell of a film. And I have no question that I'm giving it my highest rating at a high five stars. <laughs> Sponsor time. This video is sponsored by The Glory Collective. Apparel, accessories, and prints. Use promo code GLORYBEARD15 to get 15% off all purchases. The Glory Collective for the Seekers. So that's my spoiler free review done for Joker. What did you think about the movie? Let me know down in the comments. Make sure you subscribe and ring the bell. If you want to find me on social media, any of these, all links are in the description. And I'll see you soon.